there was a Namada committee appointed by the Prime Minister mm-hmm. and Medha went on hunger strike, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Shunglu, the former CAG, was the chairman. Mm-hmm. I and Mr. Chetta, former, J- 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 former Delhi University Vice Chancellor, who was on the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council at the time, we were both member members. Mm-hmm. What we did was we surveyed every single family, exact number, I cannot tell you offhand, but it's uh, the in the neighborhood of 45,000 families. What we found was, obviously, in, in government we know corruption everywhere and the fruits of, uh, uh, the, the benefits of law not reaching the people. This is universal in India. Right. We found that also. Mm-hmm. And when they were identified, they clearly Madhya Pradesh government was told in no uncertain terms mm-hmm. what needed to be done. Mm-hmm. But fundamentally, uh, but if you see that report, mm-hmm. uh, it's a public document. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have identified, given all the data, mm. and we found that uh, fundamentally the the law in those days, you no, know, until the recent law came about resettlement and rehabilitation, etc., and the land acquisition. Mm. Uh, at the time, that was the most progressive package in the history of India for mm. any land acquisition for a project. We noticed that the efforts were made to implement the law mm. as per the provisions of law, executive orders, the instruments, etc. Mm. And of course, there are deficiencies in execution like in everywhere else. Mm. But you cannot fault the government and on the broader issue. Right. You see, the package at the time, if I recall rightly, mm. was actually pretty good by those standards. Right. Everybody who lost even one cent of land mm. was given either land or money to buy land equivalent to 2.5, uh, uh, I think 2 hectares or uh, 2.5 acres, I don't recall the exact, as I said, I don't have the report, but mm-hmm. that's the first time in India's history when people are given alternative land or money to buy land, even if you lost only one cent of land. Mm-hmm. What we have seen is that the farmers continued to live there in those houses most of the time, mm-hmm. and they were continue to, continuing to farm. Mm. Except when the rainfall is heavy and the flood is there, that particular part is in it. Otherwise, they are continuing to form. In effect, mm. uh, their livelihoods were not affected at this point of time. Mm. Uh, and they got these things. No, I don't think statue of uh, Patel has not anything to do with the project per se. Mm. But we must dealing these two issues. Why should we involve the Sadar Patel in, in this controversy about this uh, project? I think the locational choice is nearly a political choice. It's nothing to do with the project, first of all. Okay. It so happened that they called it Sadar Patel Reservoir or something. Hmm. What has Patel got to do with that? So let us first dealing the statue from uh, this project. Hmm. The second is, hmm. uh, I think all of us in India, across parties and cultures and religions and regions and languages, we all admire Sadar Patel because he was the man who unified India, 540 plus three states, or 562, I think, three states. Right. Unifying them in a very short span of time, with breathtaking rapidity, with hardly any violence. Hmm. Except in Hyderabad state, there was not a short, short fire. Right. It was a miracle of an achievement. Hmm. Compared to you know, what happened in Italy's unification, compared to German unification by Bismarck with blood and iron. Right. This was a miracle. It was a one-off, one-off event in global history itself. Hmm. And the man who accomplished that, you know, he deserves of eternal gratitude. I yield to none in my respect and admiration for Patel's uh, uh, statesmanship and his contribution to India. Mm. But, mm. but, unity is not uniformity. Right. If the government's desire is now mm. to project a sense of threat to unity of India, mm. And therefore, we require all these statues and all these symbols. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are uh, off the track because Mm -hmm. there is absolutely no threat to unity of India. Mm -hmm. As opposed to 1947, Mm -hmm. 95% of people of India and 95% of the geography of India Mm -hmm. are absolutely committed to the unity of India and integrity of India. You hear that there's Gandhi, Gandhi's 150th birthday is coming. Uh, certainly we talk about national statues of Mahatma Gandhi. Certainly Mahatma Gandhi was a far greater person than Patel. Hmm. I don't think I'm saying anything controversial in saying that. Okay. Because Patel himself accepted Papua as the ultimate authority on his life, hmm. let alone on his country. Right. So uh, we can think of even a bigger statue for Mahatma Gandhi. But this is symbolism. Hmm. What they represented 
for this country is nation building efforts mm. and india's constitutionalism as we now understand mm. and india's future that is what is central and finally mm. if you make it a party political issue mm. if you take a segmented view of history mm. and we project patel or papu or somebody else in a in a, in a narrow way mm. perhaps we're not doing justice to ourselves as a country and to these great men and women right therefore no uh, admiring our great leaders and uh, recognizing their contribution and uh, creating appropriate monuments is absolutely in order mm. uh, but these three caveats are very important so that's also not warranted no mm. both are unwarranted mm. I, i believe that now uh, this is there's a threat to unity and this represents unity is a uh, little bit of symbolism and politics mm. calling it a flag day and a good day for disarmament i don't know what it means mm. so you know both are unwarranted patel was mm. like gandhi ji an extraordinary indian leader unquestioned mm. and uh, he, his contribution to india was immense perhaps not always adequately recognized because the peaceful way with which he integrated 560 plus princely states mm. of diverse backgrounds mm. uh, in a short span of time was a uh, uh, unparalleled achievement in global history right. therefore that must be adequately recognized and remembered and respected mm. uh, but at the same time mm. we must recognize that there are various um, strands of indian history mm. we must not take a segmented view and we must not reduce all these great myths to symbolism